Hi, everybody. I'm Jody Pear. I just wanted to stop in for a moment. Uh, we'll be back to our regular recordings. Kathy and I will be back um, next week. And we're excited about the areas that we um, are going to be talking about and uh, some of the new um, ideas that we have come up with um, in how to share our knowledge with you and to inspire you to create a joyful home environment. So you may recall just before Christmas, I did launch my online store that I am calling uh, currently calling Decorating with Intention. And I am going to rename that here already. And I'm calling it the Intentional Home Shop. And that is going to coincide with the new name for this video series that you're watching and um, our conversations that we're having. Everything revolves around being very intentional in the home. And so that is also going to be the new name of our, um, of our videos, the intentional home. So one of the things that we are going to continue doing in 2021 is share what inspires us with you. And one of um, the big inspirations for me is a book that I have read from periodically and shared with you called Simple Abundance. This is not a new book. This is from 1995. And, but it is so good and so insightful. And it really is just too good not to share. And so if you don't have this yourself, um, you can listen in and I'm occasionally pulling out quotes or um, readings from some of uh, her essays in here. They're just, they're so good. Um, so I'm going to share one with you today after this video. Um, and it's actually the foreword to the book because it's just so powerful and so inspiring. And I can't think of a better way to kick off 2021. Um, with a little bit of inspiration. So I'll be sharing that with you. And then also my bedroom is finished. <laughs> I'm so excited. Just before Christmas, the bookcase that I have been waiting on for several weeks finally arrived. And so um, Larry installed that for me and um, it just feels so good. So I have a little video clip also to show you the finished bedroom. So I hope you're enjoying the holidays and whatever manner <laughs> is working for you in these times. And again, Kathy and I will be back to our normal recordings starting next week. So have a great rest of your weekend and see you soon. Bye. <laughs>I just love the simple, clean, modern, simplistic lines. And here is, I'm heading over to show you our happy wall. These are all travel photos and it's a combination of some of our favorite places that we've been to and places that we still want to go to. So there it is, our finished bedroom, finally. <laughs> Forward. Often, people attempt to live their lives backwards. They try to have more things or more money in order to do more of what they want so that they will be happier. The way it actually works is the reverse. You must first be who you really are, then do what you need to do in order to have what you want. Margaret Young. Sarah writes, Several years ago, after I'd written two books celebrating 19th century domestic life, I was about to begin writing one on Victorian decorative details. But the thought of ruminating on ruffles and flourishes for a year brought dread to my heart. What I wanted to write was a book that would show me how to reconcile my deepest spiritual, authentic, and creative longings with often overwhelming and conflicting commitments to my husband and daughter, 
invalid mother, work at home, work in the world, siblings, friends, and community. I knew I wasn't the only woman hurtling through real life as if it were an out-of-body experience. I knew I wasn't the only woman frazzled, depressed, worn to a raveling. But I also knew I certainly wasn't the woman with the answers. I didn't even know the questions. I wanted so much. Money, success, recognition, genuine creative expression, but had absolutely no clue as to what I truly needed. At times, my passionate hungers were so voracious, I could deal with them only through denial. I was a workaholic, careaholic, and perfectionist. I couldn't remember the last time I was kind to myself. Was I ever? More often than it feels comfortable to admit, I was an angry, envious woman constantly comparing myself to others only to become resentful because of what seemed to be missing from my life, although I couldn't have told you what it was. This secret sense of longing contributed to a perpetual state of guilt because I share my life with a marvelous man and our smart, sweet, witty, beautiful child whom I adore. I had so much. I felt as if I didn't have the right to want more. Money was an enormous, emotionally charged issue that controlled my ability to be, to be happy because I let it. Money was the only way I could measure my success and self-worth. If I couldn't write a check on my accomplishments, they didn't exist. Frustrated and unable to fathom why some women appeared to lead much more fulfilling lives, even though I was conscientiously connecting all the dots, I careened between feeling that I was frittering my life away to feeling that I was sacrificing it on the altar of my own ambitions. I was a woman in desperate need of simple abundance. But before this book could be written, I had to take stock of what was working in my life and what wasn't. Perhaps for the first time, I had to be ruthlessly honest, both inwardly and outwardly. During this time of profound introspection, six practical, creative, and spiritual principles, gratitude, simplicity, order, harmony, beauty, and joy, became the catalyst that helped me define a life of my own. One morning, I awoke to the realization that almost imperceptibly, I'd become a happy woman, experiencing more moments of contentment than distress. Feeling confident again, I, propo I proposed writing a downshifting lifestyle book for women who want, as I do, to live by their own lights. But the book you're reading now bears absolutely no resemblance to the book I began or to the book my editor expected. While I wrote for two years, Simple Abundance underwent an extraordinary metamorphosis, as did I. On the page every morning, spirituality, authenticity, and creativity converged into an intimate search for wholeness. I began writing about eliminating clutter and ended up on a safari of the self and spirit. No one is more astonished by this than I am. As simple abundance evolved from creating a manageable lifestyle into living in a state of grace, I began to barely recognize the woman I once was. Simple abundance has enabled me to encounter everyday epiphanies, find the sacred in the ordinary, the mystical in the mundane, fully enter into the sacrament of the present moment. I've made the unexpected but thrilling discovery that everything in my life is significant enough to be a continuous source of reflection, revelation, and reconnection. Bad hair, mood swings, carpools, excruciating deadlines, overdrawn bank accounts, dirty floors, grocery shopping, exhaustion, illness, nothing to wear, unexpected company, even the final 25 pounds. Simple abundance has reminded what to do, has reminded me what to do with a few loaves and fishes and has shown me how to spin straw into gold. Simple abundance has given me the transcendent awareness that an authentic life is the most personal form of worship. Everyday life has become my prayer. Writing Simple Abundance has brought me to the awareness that the reason I was so unhappy, frustrated, resentful, envious, and angry was because I wasn't living the real life for which I was created, an authentic life. I try to now. At least I can now recognize boundaries, 
What's more, I'm gradually starting to set them. For a woman in the 1990s, this is nothing less than miraculous. I don't have a million dollars in the bank, but I now realize that abundance and lack are parallel realities. Every day I make the choice of which one to inhabit. Now I understand that all my hours aren't billable. Finding a quiet center in which to create and sustain an authentic life has become as, as essential as breathing. I know all this because at the heart of the Simple Abundance journey is an exhilarating and earth-rumbling awakening, one that has utterly changed how I view myself and my daily round. The authentic self is the soul made visible. This book is organized as a walk through the year beginning on New Year's Day. But if this book finds its way to you in April, don't think that you can't use it. I would suggest, however, that you go back to read the month of January in which the six simple abundance principles and how they work are explained. February is devoted to excavating your authentic self. After that, each month ruminates on finding your authenticity in your daily round, the domestic arts, work, beauty, fashion, and personal pursuits that bring contentment. Reading books changes lives, so does writing them. May simple abundance, through its gentle lessons of comfort and joy, help you find the authentic life you were born to live. Sarah Von Brannock, May 1995